Hi everyone, Kimo here, and today we're talking about cheese boards. So if you've been to a nice party before with a cheese board, cheese boards are awesome because they can feed so many people and they just present so nicely. We've gotten so many compliments on our cheese boards and I wanna share with you some tips and tricks to help you make a cheese board in about five minutes or so. So first off, let's show you the kinds of cheese boards that we already have in our collection. Now cheese boards can be made out of just about any material, marble, ceramic, wood. We happen to love wood cheese boards. People also just use butcher paper, rolling it out almost like a runner on a surface, say it's a kitchen countertop, and putting your meats and cheeses and other accoutrements right there on the butcher paper. Today, I'm gonna to show you three different cheese boards that we have in our collection, starting with this beauty from Ikea of all places. This is our medium to medium large size cheese board. And if I were to guess, it's probably almost two feet across this way. So lots of room, lots of real estate on this one. And probably at its widest point, about 12 inches wide. So this one is a great one. Again, costs about $20 at Ikea. Moving on to our next one, and this one I thought about for so long and finally just dove in and got it. I got this one a couple of years ago from World Market. Now, if you happen to have a World Market in your area, it's just a fantastic store to go in and there's so many great gift ideas, decor ideas. I got this cheese board on sale for I think about $50 or so and it was an investment, but I use it all the time. It shows up at just about every single party that we have. And look how gigantic that thing is. It's huge, it's huge. And last but not least, this cheese board here, which we're gonna to use today for today's tutorial. This cheese board I got mm, probably almost 10 years ago. It's still in great shape. And I got it at our local farmer's market. There was a person there, a local artisan, who actually makes these. And he uses different woods that are local to the area. And you can see these beautiful patterns that he's able to get. And so we're gonna use this one. This one's a smaller one. Uh, it's the smallest cheese board that I have. And if I were to guess, it's probably about maybe a couple of feet across. And again, at its widest point, about eight inches or so. Now on to the ingredients that we can get from Trader Joe's. What I like about Trader Joe's in this particular case is that these items come prepackaged. So let's start. First things first, this lovely tapas sampler set. And this is their Spanish collection, which makes sense because it's called the tapas sampler. And there are three different cheeses here. They're all quite small, but this one is the Iberico. This one is the Cabra Alvino. And the last one is the Manchego. I'm a huge fan of Manchego cheese. And in fact, when we went to our honeymoon in Seville, I had the most incredible Manchego cheesecake. I've never seen it anywhere else. I should probably look that up and maybe even make it in some future video. So aside from the cheese, of course we need meat. And Trader Joe's again comes to the rescue. They have this packet that has a variety of different meats and they've got two different varieties that I've seen. One is a Spanish collection and then the other one is an Italian collection. Since we have Spanish cheeses here, I thought we would complement that with a Spanish pack of meats. There's chorizo, there is the jamón serrano, which is the equivalent of um, prosciutto. And then lastly, we have the, sal the salchichon, perfect for our purposes today. No cheese board would be complete without crackers. I love the options that they have for gluten-free, and so I'm gonna focus on gluten-free options today. And there's this three seed beet crackers, uh, and then its cousin, I guess you could say, also available at Trader Joe's. This is the same thing, three seed, but instead it's made out of sweet potatoes. These are both gluten-free, and you know if you're gluten-free or if you have gluten-free friends that will attend your party, it's really important to get things that can include everybody in the meal. So we've got the cheese, we've got the meats, we've got the crackers. Now, let's look at what else we can include with the cheese board to bump it up that much more. And I've got three items from Trader Joe's that I wanna share with you. First is an olive tapenade. Now, olives are synonymous with cheese boards, but if you want something that's a little bit more spreadable, Tapenade is basically olives that are chopped up in, into a spread. Every good cheese board also needs a strong mustard. Now you can pick whatever mustard you want, but I tend to gravitate more towards the unique and special mustards with a slightly sweeter flavor. This one from Trader Joe's is a honey 
pale ale mustard, so it's gonna be a little sweeter, and I like the sweetness because it cuts down on all the saltiness that's on the cheese board itself. So the sweetness kind of acts to counterbalance that a little bit. And one more thing to include in our cheese board today will be this red pepper spread from Trader Joe's. It is so popular at parties. Number one, it's just a beautiful color, sort of an orangey red, but the taste itself, it's sweet, it's smooth, and it really is a nice compliment, again, to a cheese board which can be, tend to be a little saltier. Now, on top of these ingredients, I also like to add in a couple of other things to make a cheese board special. And you need cheese knives. So this comes in a set of cheese knives that are smaller, which for me is perfect because that way each individual cheese can get its own knife and they're kind of cute. The next thing that we're bringing in are these little ramekins. These are basically small bowls that you can put your spreads in and other items. So we've got a couple of these that we're gonna include for each of our spreads and these little wooden spoons that I got off of Amazon. I also think that having the right toothpicks can be really fun. And instead of just your regular old toothpicks, why don't you pick up some of these fun ones here? So these are toothpicks that have an unusual shape. They're sturdier and you can use them for a lot of things. And these I got from the Asian market and they're bamboo and they've got this little knot at the end and it just makes for something a little bit funner and more festive. From time to time, I also like to make these little note cards. These give the name of the cheese that you're looking at. And it's important in cases like this where the cheeses look very similar to each other. In fact, visually, it's very hard to tell these cheeses apart. Little signs like this help your audience to understand what it is that they're eating. The last thing that I'm gonna show you is actually a plate that's meant to put your olives in. So this is an olive tray. It's beautiful, it's clean, it's sleek, but we're gonna use it today in a way that maybe it wasn't intended, but it's gonna add a little bit of flair to our overall cheese board look. So let's get started. So what do you think? You have an amazing cheese board. All the ingredients here cost under $20 at Trader Joe's, and it only took about five minutes or so of your time. If you liked what you saw today, please like this video and consider subscribing. This is Kimo signing out with a reminder to craft your own beautiful life. Thank you.